everyone, Kelly here, and I realized that when I did my November TBR, I forgot to include the Skoden Readathon. I had heard about it, but then forgot to watch her video about it until after I had already filmed my TBR, so I decided I really do want to participate. And if you don't know, the Skoden Readathon is hosted by Native Lady Book Warrior. That's her channel. And it is like all month of November, just focusing on reading books by Indigenous authors. And one of her challenges, she has a bingo board. And one of the challenges is to read for seven consecutive days, only Indigenous authors. And so I decided since I had forgotten to include this into my TBR, the way I would participate and still like, you know, try to fill out the whole bingo board was that I would just start reading only indigenous authors starting at about like November 21st, 22nd, because I still am working on the the November TBR that I had already posted. And I'll also be doing a buddy read for the week that lasts up until the 20th. So I thought if I start it like after that buddy read is over, I can just finish or I can just focus on indigenous authors the whole rest of the month and I could still participate in this readathon and I would also like be able to fill, fulfill that seven day challenge. Um, so I have lots of books here because in addition to me wanting to participate, I also want my kids to participate in this. I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old and already every year what I've been doing in the month of November is getting a bunch of picture books by, um, I was mostly fo focusing on Native American authors, but this year it's just with any indigenous authors in order to kind of, and like reading them to them, in order to kind of combat some of the messages that they might be getting, you know, about the Thanksgiving story and all that in school. And so I had already been doing that every November and it also just introduces them to more cultures, more people's stories. And, you know, we, we can read authors, uh, indigenous authors other times of the year, but it just makes sure that we have one month where we're focusing on that. I was already doing that, so I figured, why not my kids also participate in the readathon? So I have, I'm going to be showing you each of the prompts, the book or short story that I will be reading, because um, some of these will be shorter things because it's, I'm only doing this for about seven to ten days. Um, so I'll sh show the thing that I'm going to read personally, but then I'll show you some picture books that I'm going to be reading with my kids because you might have kids that you want to share these picture books with, or you might be an adult that enjoys reading picture books because let's face it, picture books are just nice. Like I, as an adult, really love reading beautiful and well-written picture books to my kids. And so feel free as an adult to use these if you want to participate in the Skoden Readathon for yourself or just to read any time of the year for yourself as well. So they can be for everybody. Um, so I wanted to show you all that just so you know, I'm not making my kids do only Indigenous authors for that week um, because I let them read whatever they want, but we will be reading all of these picture books at the end of the month. So now let's go through all the prompts. The first prompt is Queer or Two-Spirit Representation. And the book that I want to read myself is A Lats Away by Darcy Little Badger. And this one, from what I can tell, it's a really popular book that I've been meaning to read for a long time. And from what I've heard from other people, it is kind of like a murder mystery with some um, kind of paranormal type things like our main character is able to I think either resurrect or talk to dead animals and so this one I've heard lots of good things about this author and this book in particular so I'm excited to read that one. The book I want to read with my kids is called Kapai Mahu by Hinale Moana, Wong Kalu, Dean Hammer, and Joe Wilson, illustrated by Daniel Sosa. Just so you know, I have looked up all of these authors and I did look up how to pronounce all their names. I just apologize if I don't get it exactly right because it's a lot of names to remember the pronunciation of. Um, and this one is was originally a movie and then they made this book out of the movie. And it is um, about four dual male and female spirits from Hawaii and this is part of a native Hawaiian legend. So that's the one I'm going to read with my kids. And I, I, it might be interesting to look up the movie. I don't know if the movie is targeted towards children as well since the picture book is. So I'll have to look that up and see. And then the next prompt is 
Omao book cover. And that means a book cover is with the colors red, yellow, blue, or black. It can be one of those colors or a combination of those colors. The one I want to read is called Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time, edited by Hope Nicholson. And this is an anthology, an indigenous LGBT sci-fi anthology. So this also could count for the first prompt. These are several, these can count for several prompts if I don't get all of them done. Um, but this one, I've heard good things about it that I like speculative fiction type stories. And so I've heard about this one as being a good like sci-fi type anthology to read. It's pretty short and it's short stories so I can just spread it out throughout the time. So that is what I want to read for that. Oh, in terms of the colors, it has both like blue and yellow on the cover. And then for my kids, I have a few books that fit this. I have Still This Love Goes On by Buffy St. Marie and Julie Flett. And this is, um, the author of this is actually a singer songwriter. And so this was originally a song that then she put into a picture book illustrated by, I guess Julie Flett is a very popular um, native illustrator. And this has both red and black on the cover. And then to cover blue and yellow, I have Bow Wow Pow Wow by Brenda J. Child. Translation by Gordon Jourdain and illustrations by Jonathan Thunder. And we actually did read this one last year, but my kids loved it so much that I got it out again this year. And this follows a girl who is going to a powwow with her family and she falls asleep and then dreams about dogs having a powwow. So it was really cute story. My kids really loved it last year. And then this one covers all the colors. It has black, blue, yellow, and red on it. And this is Josie Dances by Denise Lajimo Deer. Illustrations by Angela Erdrich. And this is about a girl who wants to dance at the next powwow and her just preparing for that, learning the dance moves, getting what she's going to wear and just prep prepping for that. The next prompt is Beyond the Lower 48. So that just means a book where the author is from someplace other than the like main United States. So that could be Alaska, Hawaii, a different country. The book I'm going to read for this is Indian Horse by Richard Wagamasi. And this one takes place in Canada. Um, it follows an Ojibwe boy who is, I think he might be a teenager, who is um, placed into a horrific boarding school and he finds his salvation through hockey. So this is, will definitely be a hard one. It goes through a very like hard time in Canadian history. Um, so that is the one I'm going to read. And this one was also a choice by Krista from Books and Jams for her Patreons to read. So that was part of why I picked it for this prompt. And then for my kids, we're going to read Bird Song, written and illustrated by Julie Flett. And this is about a little girl who moves to a new area and becomes friends with an elderly neighbor. And I, then the other book we're going to read is also illustrated by Julie Flett, but written by Nicola I Campbell. This is called A Day with Yaya about a girl and her grandmother who I believe they're going foraging. Yeah, so they're foraging for edible plants and mushrooms. So both of these seem very nature focused. They both take place in Canada. The next prompt is short story versus poetry. So that's just reading something that's a short story that's written in verse or is poetry. And so for me, I have a short story on my Kindle already. And that is The Backbone of the World by Stephen Graham Jones. I haven't read anything by Stephen Graham Jones because I always kind of worried from what I heard from other people that he would be a little too intense for me in t terms of horror because I don't usually handle like graphic horror. Um, so I figured I would try this short story by him and see like if I can handle what he is writing. So that's the short story I'm going to read. And then for my kids, both of these are poems in picture book form. This first one is called This Is How I Know by Brittany Luby and illustrated by Joshua Mangashig Paulus Steckley. And this one is bilingual. It's about a, a child and her grandmother exploring nature and it's written in both English and Anishinaabe Moen. So I like that it has both languages written there. So even if I can't pronounce that language, I can like show my kids that this is written in two different languages. And then we have another poem story called Sweetest Kalu by Selena Kaluk, illustrated by Alexandra Neonakis. And this one is a be beautiful bedtime poem written by an Inuit throat singer who, which celebrates the gifts given to a newborn baby by all the animals of the Arctic. And that just sounds really sweet and cute. So that's the one we can read at bedtime. 
The next prompt is unread Indigenous author. So that's just reading an author that you haven't read before. And so for me, I'm going to be reading, I have this on ebook. I have Heartbeat Braves by Pamela Sanderson, and I've never read anything from this author. And this is the beginning in a series of kind of like romance type novels. I don't know how big of a part the romance is, but I've heard that they are romances, but they all take place at this urban Indian center. And I think in this one, they're trying to save the center or raise money or something to do with this um, urban Indian center. And then two people fall in love or start dating while they're there. And then for the kids, I mean, this is kind of where I put everything that didn't fit another category um, because I haven't read a lot of these authors. So the first one I wanted to read with them is Keep on a Monk by Danielle Green Deer, Anthony Perry, and Alexis Bunter, illustrated by Gary Meaches Sr. And this is just a Thanksgiving story written by written from the Native perspective. So I think this is a good one to read the, the week of Thanksgiving. Then I have Finding My Na by Dance by Rhea Thundercloud, illustrated by Kalila J. Fuller. And this is actually a nonfiction book, so it could fit that prompt that comes up later. And this is about Rhea Thundercloud, who is a professional dancer, and how she became a prof professional dancer. So it's just kind of a little bit memoir type thing. And then I have The Forever Sky by Thomas Peacock, illustrated by Annette S. Lee. And this is about two brothers who are mourning the death of their grandmother and their uncle is comforting them by telling them stories based on the sky and the constellations. The next prompt is to read a middle grade or children's book. Obviously, all of the, the picture books I've been talking about so far could fit this since they're children's books, but I am going to talk about two middle grade books that I'm going to be reading. First, I have The Birch Bark House by Louise Erdrich, and I have just never read anything by this author, even though she is an incredibly popular author. She's got this middle grade series, but then she also has a ton of adult books as well. And I just re really need to read one of her books because she is so popular. And this book is kind of like Little House on the Prairie, but from a Native American perspective. And I think that's really important because we did read Little House in the Big Woods a couple years ago, my daughter and I. And so I would just like her to see things from different perspectives of the same time period, same area. Um, and so we want to, I want to at least read this one with her and then we'll see if we continue the series. Um, I don't remember how many books in the series and if all of them would be appropriate for her age, but I have heard this one recommended for that like first, second grade age. So I want to read that with my seven year old. And then one that I could probably read with both of my kids that is still a chapter book is Jojo McCoon's They Used to Be Best Friend, written by Don Quigley and illustrated by Tara Otterbert. And this is just a very short chapter book. That's why I'm like, maybe my younger one will sit for long enough. We'll see. If not, I'll just read it with my second grader. And this one is just a cute, like, slice of life school type story about this girl who has a best friend, but then it seems like her best friend doesn't want to be her best friend anymore. So totally slice of life thing, but it takes place on an Ojibwe reservation. So I think it's good for them to see just like a normal friendship relationship kind of issue that they would have, like that my kids would have at school, but from a um, girl who lives on a reservation and goes to a reservation school. So I think that'll be fun for the middle grade prompt. And this is actually part of a series. So if this is something you're interested to read with your kids, I think there's two books so far in this series. And then the next prompt is SGJ Rendon Whedon, which is just to read a horror mystery thriller book. Those are just some popular authors that write in those genres. And I already showed you I was going to read a short story from Stephen Graham Jones, but I also wanted to clear this book and it fits in this because it is a, um, I think that it would count as a mystery thriller, maybe a little horror, like it's got a little bit of everything. Um, this is called Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabgishik Rice. And this one also takes place in Canada, so it could fit into that prompt as well. And this is kind of like a post-apocalyptic book about what happens when human civilization kind of falls apart. And so I think there will be not necessarily like horror horror, but like just some maybe scary things, a little post-apocalyptic stuff. So I just fit that into that category. And I'm not reading anything from this category to my kids because, you know, they obviously just don't really read a lot of thriller horror type books. So I'm skipping this one for my kids. 
And then for the next prompt, it's read a nonfiction book. And for myself, I am reading Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teaching of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And this is about, she is a botanist, so she's been trained to question, answer questions of nature and use the tools of science. But she's also a member of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation, and she embraces the notion that plants and animals are our eldest teachers. So it's kind of like mixing both of those things together. I've heard amazing things about this. I've also heard that you should read it slowly. So if I, I might not finish this in that time period, but I at least want to get it started and then I can continue reading it into December. But at least if I can like start it, because I've heard some people say they only read like a section a day because it is pretty dense, but and also kind of more of a peaceful experience when you read a little bit at a time. So that's my plan. And for my kids, since a lot of the books that we are reading revolve around powwows, I decided to pick up this book, which is Pow Wow, A Celebration Through Song and Dance by Karen Pheasant Nagana Guane. And this is just a nonfiction book all about the powwow and learning about um, the music, the dancing, everything. It does have a lot of words, like it's a pretty long one. So I don't know that we're going to be able to read this entire thing during that week. But I thought we could kind of, as we they come up with questions while we're reading the picture book, we can kind of answer those questions from this book. So we might not read the entire thing in that week, but we can at least like pick and choose what we read from this so they can learn more about um what, what's really going on in those picture books. And the last prompt is kind of a bonus prompt. It's to read a graphic novel or a comic. And I picked up Trickster, which is Native American Tales, a graphic collection. So this is just a bunch of different authors and illustrators doing um, graphic novels that so they're all indigenous writers. I don't know if all the illustration uh, illustrators are indigenous, but all of the authors are. So there's a lot of different types of art and story, but they all revolve around trickster stories. And I really enjoy that. I read some trickster Native American stories with my daughter yesterday, or not yesterday, last year for school um, around this time. And we really enjoyed them. So I'm going to read this one and I don't know if it's kid appropriate. So there are some stories in here that I can read to her. Then I'll probably share them with my older daughter. Um, but we'll see because some of these might be more for adults. I'm not sure. Um, but this one I'm really excited about because I do really enjoy trickster tales. And that's it for me. Let me know if you're participating in this Golden Reathon. I will link all of these books down below. Like I'll write them all out and link that, link to them so that you can find them if you want to like share them with your kids or read them yourself. And that's it for me. And I hope you are having a great November and I'll see you next time. Bye.